So cold. I didn't feel better ever after I slept. Instead, I felt even more tired. Let me take a look at the note. I couldn't rest with this cold weather if only there was something warm. All right. I was hoping to find a chance to escape when she fell asleep. However, time passed, and she didn't show any sign of closing her eyes. I couldn't help but fall asleep first. The last thing I saw was her lighting another cigarette. My body must have really been exhausted if I could fall asleep like that. I opened my eyes in a daze and saw an unfamiliar face right before me. I jumped back reflexively and tried to shield my chest with my hands. Yet my tied up hands reminded me of my kidnapped status. Regardless, I was shocked by this new face. I stared at the new girl before me. The first thing I noticed were her beautiful eyes. Clean, like brown, like pieces of amber. Her thick coat and dark red sweater looked pretty old. Her small body suggested she might have been in junior high. So she was clearly unfit for a place like this. I didn't know who she was, but I easily noticed the knife in her hand. She stared straight at me, but showed no signs of speaking, which somehow emitted an inexplicable pressure. Who are you? I tried to ask her, but she refused to answer and shook her head. She was on guard of my every movement with pressed lips. There was no sign of the kidnapper around. There were only the two of us in the room. In other words, a good chance to escape. Can you untie the rope for me? She shook her head. Seeing she had no intention to help, I tried to untie it myself. Her expression vividly changed upon noticing my attempt. <laughs> As expected. Only another victim, or the accomplice, would be here. If she wasn't tied up and instead held a knife, then she must be my guard. The quiet girl and the antisocial one. What a bizarre combo. The sort of plot in the movie wouldn't have easily triggered the haters. It appeared reality could be more ridiculous than fiction. I breathed out and couldn't help but laugh out of stress. I had no idea why they would pick her as a partner. I could defeat someone of her size even if she held a knife. The young girl looked emaciated. She was most likely no older than the average junior high school student. With her head hung down, she looked a little scared and didn't want to talk. Assuming she was alone. Is there anyone else here? There would be no progress if I didn't strike up a conversation. I decided to speak proactively after giving it some thought. She stared at me tightly with no response, making one wonder if she understood. 
They were asked to guard me, right? Still no response. Can you untie the rope for me? I can't feel my hands now. And it stays like this. She shook her head, finally speaking after being silent for a while. Her voice was light and quiet, like smoke in the air. I finally heard her speak, yet it was frustrating to hear something so pointless. Who is this big sis? Is she the one with long hair that kidnapped me? Where is she? I need to talk to her. After continuously asking her questions, I got not a single answer. Perhaps I was asking them too eagerly and that made her cautious. She looked at me suspiciously and refused to say anything. I told myself to hang in there. I had to stay calm in these situations. I took a deep breath to suppress my unease. I tried to smile to lighten up the mood. Do you have anything to eat? Don't tell me your sister doesn't allow that either. I had no strength with an empty stomach. I hadn't eaten anything since yesterday, and my stamina went out faster in this cold weather. I had to save my energy for my chance. This was a war of attrition. Either she let me go, or I'd give up first. Answering with action, she put a bowl on the ground, grabbed the water ball with difficulty, and carefully poured some into it. She handed me the bowl and then brought me a pack of crackers. Worrying in my escape, she never moved her gaze away from me. The hand grasping the knife never loosened up. Observing her actions quietly, I hoped to read her thoughts but couldn't discern anything except stress. I drank the water with much effort, spilling quite a bit on my clothes due to my tied up hands. My clothes were wet again after finally getting dried. The hard crackers tasted like pure flour alone, hard to swallow even with water. I knew it was not the, same to, not the time to be picky. I had to cherish any opportunity to replenish my strength. Noticing your conflicted gaze, I asked, What's wrong? I will cooperate. At least for now. I didn't finish the full sentence. She already looked happy and clearly dropped her guard a little. Organizing the information I could gather, I started to plan my next steps. Let's see. She didn't seem to have the same level of animosity as the other girl. Maybe I could convince her. She believed her sister would let me go once she got the money, if only things would go so smoothly. Would the teacher know if something was wrong if I hadn't gone to cram school for two days? Unlikely, considering how often I skipped it. Unless it lasted long enough, but even the worst case scenario, they would only contact the parents instead of the police. 
I started to regret not having more friends who would notice me going missing. Expecting her to let me go upon getting the ransom. Would it really be that easy? Remembering that vague smile, I didn't feel very assured. The girl was squatting next to the wall and stared at me while hugging her legs. There was no curiosity in her eyes, as though nothing interested her here. She was just guarding this place at someone else's behest. Big sis, huh? Concerning their relationship, it was unlikely she planned the kidnapping. She was most likely just an accomplice following orders. Like some stereotypical bad girls who smoked or dyed their hair, she looked like a well-behaved but shy kid, at least if I hadn't met her in this situation. So who was planning all this? Somehow I felt things weren't as simple as they seemed. There were too many points of suspicion if they were the ones planning this. Even carrying me here should have been problematic for them. Also, the person she was contacting concerned me as well. Hey. I called out to catch her attention and tried to start a conversation. She was younger than the kidnapper yesterday, and with much less animosity. It might have been a chance to convince her. How did you get my information? You're a student, right? Do you know what you're doing? She stared at me with no change of expression. I wasn't sure if she heard me. This might be even more troublesome than the other one. I can at least guess my kidnapper's thoughts if there was some sort of conversation. I was only wasting my time here at this rate. I don't know what she told you, but this is kidnapping. I tried to sound more threatening to make her talk. There would be punishment even if you are underage, and that would involve your family too. Do you know that? Just using you. They might blame this all on you later. She abruptly interrupted me. How can you be so sure? Just because she was kind to you? Do you think she would still be on your side by then? Finally making her talk, I tried to push forward. Has she told you her plan after getting the money? Do you really know her? She interrupted me loudly and stood up all of a sudden with her little body shaking. I didn't expect such a big reaction. Perhaps her relationship with her big sister was closer than I thought. Of course I don't know your big sis. I stopped for a few seconds and stared at her coldly. All I know is that she is a kidnapper. That's all that matters. She raised the knife and yelled at me with her chest heaving up and down, but swallowed the word before the key part. Why then? Facing my questioning, she lowered her gaze. Worrying she might get too agitated and really harm me, I decided to change the subject despite my desire to continue. Anyway. I don't get it, but you better give it some thought. I coldly ended the conversation, leaving her staring at me hesitantly. No matter how much faith one had in others, no one would stay still after hearing those words. I wasn't sure how affected that was. I could only wait and see.
Not able to retort, she squatted next to the wall in depression, mumbling with her head in her arms. Seeing her almost about to cry made me feel a little uncomfortable. But I would do anything as long as I could get out of here. Besides, they were the ones that fought here. There should be no sense of guilt involved even if I hurt them a little. Let's try to strike up a conversation with her. So cold. One of my coats all I have is this thermal shirt, which is far from sufficient in this weather. I have to keep myself warm to even rest. I can't conserve my energy without sleep. Can you bring me that coat? I'm a little cold. She turned her gaze to the coat, but only shook her head, unmoved. want to keep warm. It would be troublesome for you if I got sick, right? She hesitated, but handed me the blanket on her head on, on the bed after seeing I wasn't lying. Thank you. Hearing the almost pleading tone, for a split second I didn't know how to respond. It wasn't like I had a choice. What was she thinking about? Regardless, I could finally rest nicely. It's... at least I could rest nicely now. Alright. Have you known Big Sis? How long have you known Big Sis? She stared at me cautiously, as though not feeling too happy about me saying bad things about her Big Sis. Uh, you really like your sister, huh? I sighed heavily. The depression in my chest didn't lessen one bit. She nodded without a second thought. She was only this certain when it involved her big sis. What if you're being manipulated? She awkwardly turned her head to hide it behind the book and refused to talk to me further. She was unexpectedly loyal to her big sis. Okay. Who are you? She silently looked at me, showing no desire to talk. Are you a student? She shook her head, still not really interested in talking to me. I looked at her. She must be underage with such thin arms and a slender body. Do your parents know about this? Do they allow you to do such a thing? She pressed her lips and shook her head. Feeling the mood was too heavy, I decided to talk to her a little later.
and prison life was surprisingly boring. I couldn't do anything with tired hands, and the only person I could talk to was as silent as a rock in one corner of the room. There was no phone, no TV, no internet. The usually insufficient 24 hours now felt way too long. Yet she didn't look one bit bored. Flipping through her book from God knows where, she observed my movements from time to time. I ate the same crackers for breakfast and lunch. I also went to the bathroom once, hoping to find a chance to escape. She stood outside with a knife when I was in there, neither rushing me nor leaving. Having found nothing useful there, I left post haste. Don't she eat anything more normal? Or do you just love crackers? She ate the same thing as me, they were cheap and tasteless no matter how long you chewed, and they only served to make your mouth dry. Unless you won a year's worth of them from a lottery, there really was no reason to keep eating them. I started a conversation out of boredom. She raised her head thoughtfully. Aren't you worried about malnutrition? There's nothing but starch, let alone fiber or vitamins. Pretty ironic for something called a nutrition biscuit. Showing no concern about balancing her diet, she didn't even raise her head, but just replied nonchalantly. Hanging out with her this whole morning, she didn't give any sort of proper response, except when it was about her big sis. Pretty incredible, I would say. Strangely enough, it wasn't like she cared about this big sis that much. It was more like she just didn't care about anything else. Did you figure something out with my dad? Her answer without hesitation didn't appear to be a lie. However, it did trigger my curiosity if she didn't even care about the status of the ransom. No matter who you are, you must care about something. Whether it be family, work, or some dream. Yet she had none of that. There isn't even some sort of animosity against me. Only caution at most. Why do you like your uh, big sis? Hesitating a little, I decided to follow how she addressed the person in question. That's it. She said no more despite the pause. Then I realized she had finished. She frowned as she stared at me. You were willing to do all this just because she took good care of you? It must be easy to please. What the hell? If you treat her nicely, she might even kill someone for you. Kidnapping is by no means a light crime in any country. You could easily end up with no more than 10 years of jail time. I finally understood why gangs like to recruit students. Around that age, anyone nice to must be a friend. And one would do anything for a friend. Unable to retort, I bet the confusion flew through her eyes. She said quietly, Depends on what you're helping her with. It was a simple question, 
well with an implication. Maybe no one took care of her except this big sis. Remembering her words from yesterday, otherwise they might have some real difficulties. Now I just feel... Maybe they had their reasons to do this. As she said, the world is not fair. If only I could convince him to let me go. Within the silence, the sudden phone vibrations sound extra sharp. Unlike yesterday, the girl picked up the phone immediately. Perhaps she was asked about me, as the girl glanced at me when answering the call. I had no idea what the conversation entailed. I can only guess from her words. It was a kidnapper from yesterday. Where could she be if she needed to call to confirm my situation? Did she already contact someone to get the ransom? Or maybe they had other bases? The girl handed me the phone. I raised my tired hands and then shrugged helplessly. She hesitated a little, put the phone next to my ear. At this distance, maybe I could bump into her by surprise. I could probably still overwhelm her even with my tied up limbs. Before making up my mind, I heard a voice on the phone. The cold voice sounded a little different through the phone. The noisy background seemed to indicate she was somewhere outside. Maybe a restaurant or a karaoke place. Yep, yep. Sorry to disappoint. She didn't seem pleased with my greeting. Maybe she was expecting me to go into a panic and shiver in the corner. The more she wanted to see me in fear, the more I wanted to act indifferently. It wasn't really part of any sort of strategy, just some pointless show of resistance. She paused and let the threat. Got it. Got it. I didn't even need to guess what she wanted to say. Lose an arm or a leg, throw me off a cliff, blah blah blah. Hell, even agreeing to return me alive was already saintly of her. Most wouldn't even intend to keep the hostage alive. Hostages usually get silenced after the kidnappers got the money and were ready to run. I didn't plan to believe her words from the beginning. If I played too nice, I might get killed without knowing how. Is my dad paying? But bullshit. Why would I ask about that if not one of out of my concern for my own safety? I want to ask more, but got stopped mercilessly. 
おとなしくしなじゃあ Hey, wait. Before I could say anything, she hung up. Hang up right after she said whatever she wanted. What a woman. Hearing the empty sounds of disconnected call, I knew being mad would make no difference. She approached me once the call ended and asked me wordly. In a short period of time, I wondered what to say. She told me to stay put, and she would be home soon. Not showing any emotion, she simply took away the phone and sat back in the corner. I remembered how the big sis sat next to the window smoking, seemingly in thought, and also in patience. In contrast, this girl was way too quiet, and she just sat there holding her legs together. How much did she really know about the kidnapping? She didn't even know me nor what to do. Her big sis asked her to guard me, so she guarded. Her big sis asked her not to talk to me, so she didn't talk to me. Whether it was about the outcome or the reward, she was clueless and didn't care. She just had faith in her big sis. Such a blind trust was not far from stupidity. I almost felt bad for her. Time felt much longer when you were waiting. I even sighed in relief when I heard a sound approach. A motorcycle engine was shut down not too far away, and the closing footsteps echoed through the staircase. The noise was empty, but had a certain rhythm. There was no elevator. Was this an apartment or some privately owned house? I could only hear one person's steps, so there was no one coming back with her. The one who walked in was the same girl from the day before, aka the big sis. Same overcoat as yesterday, and her expression hadn't changed either. Welcome home. Unsure of what was going on in my mind, she looked at me suspiciously and had the plastic bag in her hand to the other girl. The little girl whispered something into her ear. I can't tell the context from this distance. The girl nodded, just staring dead straight at me. Once the girl finished, she moved towards me with a knife. She tried to check the rope, even pulling it a few times to make sure it was tight enough. I told you, I didn't do anything. If I could get out of this, do you really think I'd stay here? Urusai. Ask her then. She threw the other girl a questioning glance, which was answered by a silent nod. Her head wasn't even turned. It seemed like the bento was much more attractive than the situation here. She snorted unhappily, but couldn't find a, re a reason to act up. She then just started to laugh scornfully. <laughs> なにかしでかす勇気もないだろう。子供の頃から父親と母親が何もかも用意してくれて、どの学校に行くか、どの会社に行くか、家のお掃除も誰かがやってくれるんだろうね。一人じゃ何もできない。違う。
Here we go again. This ridiculous resentment was not just aimed at me, but anyone with a better life than her. What was the point of hating all these people? Would it change anything about her life? Wouldn't it be more practical if you tried to change something instead of hating? Where did you go? She probably would only be more pissed off if this continued, so I decided to change the subject to avoid trouble. Not cutting me any slack, she raised her eyebrow provocatively. I sighed helplessly. This was really going nowhere if she kept up with this attitude. Only after she spoke, but I noticed the little girl hadn't moved her chopsticks despite having the bent to open, as though waiting for her big sis to start the meal together. She loosened her furrowed brow and patted the little girl's head kindly. There was even a smile on her face. The little girl nodded obediently. Even an outsider like me could tell how close they were. If anything, I could even believe she still had an expression in her. More questions popped into my mind upon seeing her interaction. With such familiarity, what was their relationship? She seemed close to the little girl. What was their relationship? The sound of wire flowing in the bathroom reminded me that I hadn't taken a shower for two days. It still felt uncomfortable even though I'd barely moved or, or sweat. I was willing to give up half my possessions for a hot shower and pay with my future income for a cup of cocoa as a bonus. The little girl was clearly starved and was quietly and happily eating the rice. She paid no attention to me. Her figure looked extra weak and small from here. I still couldn't believe she could be a kidnapper. What kind of family would allow her to do such a thing? Whatever. Considering my own family, I had no right to criticize others. The girl left the bathroom holding her hair. She only washed her face since there is no hot water. The light shone on her face, reddening her pale complexion a little more rosy, yet the expression on her face was still cold as ice. She seemingly noticed my gaze and asked me with an eyebrow raised. Nothing. I just thought I hadn't taken a shower for a while. I would have called customer service given such equality. Never mind. She stood with contempt. Then I walked to the window to lightly shake the little girl's shoulder. The little girl had finished her bento and was falling asleep against the wall, despite her best efforts to stay awake. She nodded sleepily and climbed into bed obediently. Not minding all the dust on it, she got the bed sheet and lay down. Maybe she was really tired. It didn't take long for her to fall asleep completely, leaving only some steady breathing in the room. The girl walked to the window, opened her bento, and started to eat it quickly. 
Nothing for me. Tormented by a scent of the food, I couldn't help but ask. How about just a cup of coffee? I have money in my bag. Rather than the hot dinner, I prefer some hot coffee to relax my nerves. Ugh. I learned that protesting wouldn't help. And now the headache was even more unbearable without coffee. She looked troubled and was just eating absentmindedly. Kept poking the drumstick for what seemed to be no reason. Please stop playing with the food even if you're not in the mood. I can have it if you have no appetite. Hunger plus anger made me give the suggestion. I doubt me doing that would solve your problem. Though noticing your darkened look, I decided to keep my mouth shut. Piecing all the hints together along with the reaction, I could only come up with one conclusion. You can't reach my dad? Realizing she slipped without thinking, her face instantly darkened again. I didn't mean anything, I just thought. Thinking she might lose her temper, I merely tried to pass out the responsibility. However, she stood up suddenly. She bit her lip, staring me with utter hatred, voice colder than ever. Not at all, I'm just guessing randomly. Must be something wrong. I doubt the police have found out this soon, look I... Her reaction far surpassed my expectations. I tried to explain myself, but that didn't stop her walking towards me. She walked closer and closer with the knife. Eyes flashing in hysteria. Was she really going to do this? And I was really fearing for my life for the first time ever. She looked like a cornered animal that would try anything in desperation. Before she got the money, she wouldn't kill me. If resistance was futile, I decided to close my eyes and grit my teeth, hoping she wouldn't continue further. I smelled a faint scent and felt her hair on my cheek, plus rapid breathing. What's that smell? Unbelievably, at this moment of life or death, I was thinking about something this insignificant. Against my skin was a cold sensation. The blade was right before my chest. A simple push would bear it deep into my flesh. I opened my eyes and saw a look of pure ice right before me. The voice next to my ear was light but clear. Her voice was calm and the knife steady. She didn't clarify how she would do it, nor did she ask for my confirmation. Yet this threat was more powerful than anything prior. All my words got stuck in my throat. My body was paralyzed to the point I couldn't even blink. She meant it. I could read the emotion in her eyes. It was pure murderous intent. No question about it. She would do it if I did it again. You 
最悪でも一緒に死んでやるだけどうせ私みたいなのは惜しむこともない She finished her sentence, threw the knife away, and walked back to the window. I just lay there on the ground motionlessly. My tense body was still trembling. At that moment, I confirmed something. They could end me any time. The notion of her not touching me before getting the money, or having some backup plan, meant nothing to them. At this point, she had nothing to lose. <sighs> I took a deep breath as I faced the window. That's how I calmed myself down since childhood. What I needed to do stayed the same. The desk lamp drew a long shadow from her, but it just occurred still creeped me out a little. However, since she hadn't contacted my family, there was still a chance. I breathed in deeply, gathered the courage and talked to her. I have a proposal. She continued to look out the window motionlessly, showing no interest in my question. Let me go now and all my money is yours. It might not be much, but still, 70 to 80,000 NTV in total? I swear I will tell no one. Knowing she must be listening, I kept my on my own even without a response. You can escort me to the ATM if you want to, or do it in any manner you prefer. You want to keep this on the down low, right? Why so insistent? I used my last bit of strength to convince her. Considering your position, I tried to propose something that would be mutually beneficial. I believe no one would risk his or her own life until there was no other choice. Now it's still not too late. Think about it. The wait was so long I thought there was no response, but she finally turned her head. There's no rage in her eyes, only exhaustion. I... I couldn't answer out of hesitation. It's hard to create a situation where both sides could trust each other in the first place. I'd agree to such terms if the roles were reversed. I'd be the one in control once I got my freedom. She wouldn't be able to do anything to stop me from calling cops. Rather than handing her fate to me, she'd rather believe in herself. All my gallic confidence grew fainter and fainter, and I was out of ideas temporarily. But this kept going. Then what can I do to win your trust? I asked with my last ounce of courage, matching your stare I could see the fragility under a cold look. She grew silent, started to ponder my question, and the bitter smile appeared on her face. She turned the window and quietly said it again.
The mood is heavy. Let's try to do something. So, what is your relationship? They interacted like siblings, yet their ages weren't even close. Oh. I shut up after hearing displeasure in her voice. After what just happened, I had no nerves to make her mad again. I can't use the bento box and chopsticks as a weapon, and they only make me feel even more hungry. I'm not sure what brand it is, but the smell is not as bad as I thought after inhaling it for a while. They're in a blue package. What brand are they? I should try to ask about it. It might be the clue to, to identifying who she is. What's the brand of cigarette you smoke? Nani? Suitai? Nah, I'm fine. Ja, nan de kikunda? Just found its smell special. She figured telling me wouldn't matter much, so she answered easily. Your dad? Seeing how angry she got, I found something strange. Wasn't it just contradictory to hate someone yet smoke the same brand of cigarette? She still smoked the same brand of cigarettes as her father despite her dislike of him. Surely she was also conflicted. It's getting late and I still couldn't find a way to change the situation. Instead of escaping or waiting for the ransom, the safest option was to convince her to let me go. This could still get resolved without much incident, and it'd be this easy once the police got involved. But how? Even though I could tell she had hesitated, I couldn't win her trust. So I had to win her trust first. A sudden vibration broke the silence. She looked at the phone screen, then jolted a little as though being electrocuted. She lowered her eyes and read the message. She raised the corner of her mouth but didn't appear to be that happy. What is it? I had a bad feeling and instantly asked. The unexpected change of events instantly froze my blood. This was way too soon. I was naive to think I still had time to convince her. The moment she reached my family, there was no turning back. The police would start taking action. The family preparing the ransom and the culprit preparing the escape. What now? What now? 
I quickly went through all the possibilities in my mind, but couldn't come up with a solution. I must not stop thinking. There must be a way. Time passed second by second. I had no time to hesitate. It's the money you want, right? Is there really no other way? Out of options, I give it my all and just yell at her. Not giving her a, sick, a chance to contemplate. Continued after a quick pause. Let me go and you can have all my money. I'll promise you my silence too. Think about it. You really think you can get the money this easily? Are you okay with playing hide and seek for the rest of your life? Fit. I couldn't finish my words. Seeing your expression, I realized that was it. Under the nightlight, she looked almost like a dream. Too empty and transparent to be touched. That smile couldn't hide the helplessness and regret in her eyes. Silence and immense sadness. Her voice was calm, surprisingly. There's no anger or accusation, only concession in that expression. She surrendered to her hopeless life. Nothing was more convincing than that expression. So even she could express such hopelessness. The phone vibrated again. Soon you pick up the phone, I couldn't say anything. I should have known. The moment the phone rang, nay, from the very beginning. She had no other choice but this. Under the serene moonlight, the cogwheels start to spin faster. The girl opened the phone. The screen flashed the time, 3 a.m. There was only steady breathing in the room. The boy could resist the desire to sleep after all. It's the money you want, right? Is there really no other way? Remembering his words, the determination in his eyes surpassed her expectations. Perhaps he wasn't as useless as she thought. There was no regret in her decision, only a vague note of ironic sadness. Never until this moment had anyone cared what she wanted, trying to convince her not to break the law. No more, one should take responsibility for one's life, or don't keep asking for someone to help you. There is no return. Either she would get the money and pay the debt, or get arrested instead. The girl raised her head and looked into the starry sky, standing next to the window like a statue. The stars sparkled like her unsettled mind. Finally, she breathed out quietly. <laughs> The quiet voice of the girl evaporated in the room along with the cigarette smoke. もっと苦しめてやってもいいんだよ、私。あんたたちみたいな奴らは大嫌い。私の何がわかるんだ。言ってみなさいよ。<笑>